Welcome to the Alexandra Wenman Show. I'm here with my dear friend Tiffany Crossara, who is an amazing tarot goddess. She's all things tarot, Tiff. She's she's an amazing uh, psychic healer. God, what else are you, Tiff? Everything. <laughs> she's like everything. <laughs> Yeah, well, I was watching one of your YouTube videos last night and you were talking about how you are what you are. And I think the older we get, the more we realize that these are just labels, aren't they? And we are what we are. But I think also at the same time, I kind of feel that over the years, I have become also quite clear on one particular thing that I am. And And what's that? ah, well, when I when I worked on Psychic Today, I remember going into the office and saying, I'm not a psychic reader. <laughs> they looked at me and they were like, what, you've only been working here for like two years as a reader? What do you mean you're not a psychic reader? And I was like, I'm not, I'm a... And I used the word teacher because I think it was the only word they could really understand. But what has become apparent is that I am some kind of guide through the tarot archetypes um so yeah you're like an alchemist i think tarot alchemist i don't know something like that oh i like that owl yeah maybe we can coin that she's a tarot (laughs) alchemist i like that (laughs) yeah owl alchemist as well there you go and this is the land where the alchemist started his journey did you know that ah it is too yeah yeah Mm -hmm. andalusia is Mm -hmm. where the alchemist started his journey yes i should probably mention we're here in sunny spain it's actually you might be able to see our makeup sweating (laughs) off our faces <laughs> while we're sitting here. <laughs> so I've come to Spain to, to visit Tiff because she's moved here, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I moved here after, well, so many people ask me, you know, what are you doing in Spain? And I'm like, uh, they're like, you, you live here? Why, you work here? No. You have family here? No. Well, why are you here? I'm like, midlife crisis, you know? <laughs> like, okay, yes, so you you're do. not doing uni, you're not working, there's no family here, it's midlife crisis. And they just look at me like they don't know what to say. <laughs> you know, it's again one of these things about this journey. It's like, how do you actually explain to people, you know, your decisions, your choices? Yeah, yeah, who you are, what you're doing. Because it's almost as if, you know, you're kind of um, not in charge of it, or, you know, you're just going through the motions. And it maybe takes. 10 or 20 years or more before you can actually kind of work it all out and that's what I love I love doing the journey and that's what I do now I I live that through the tarot and I take people through the tarot so I take people through the fool's journey but we don't stop at the last major arcana we carry on and we do whole 78 cards so it's like around your world in 78 days and it's amazing the things that happen wowzers and with this journey so you run it as like a as a course don't you Mm -hmm. so how did you set this course up to begin with well that's a really interesting question so I guess when I walked into psychic today and said I'm not a reader and I became really clear that I I wasn't a reader I think through the process of having my book published and uh, the book was very much about not using tarot for prediction and then you know what guides are like and the universe is like, they have a great sense of humor. <laughs> and so there I was being put on live TV and it was pretty much all about prediction. <laughs> I was like, yes, <laughs> Tiffany, she'll do you a reading today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I just, you know, it felt so not in alignment with who I was and where I was coming with things. And it just got to the point where I just couldn't do that anymore. And uh, I just took a leap of faith and let go of working for any companies and put everything that I had known. So I taught tarot courses before, since 2007, um, in many different ways. But I took the best parts of each one and I just had to work through so much because to actually put everything in was like who is actually going to pay for that because if you put everything in that you have Tiffany it's an awful lot Mm -hmm. yeah so I had to work through all of that stuff to be able to launch that which I did in 2014 but I did think it was just going to be another tarot course online and then people started doing it and they were like Tiffany this is so much more than a tarot course and I was like oh yeah it is isn't it and it was just amazing everything that happened 
to people on the course like there was one lady who was on the lovers strength and chariot and she was in Malaysia at the time and uh, she went out onto the street and there was a festival on where men had hooked chariots into their skin and they were pulling them in the name of their loved ones and <laughs> she said to me if that's not strength chariot and lovers I don't know what is and she said and then she said how did you know <laughs> because on that first tarot course everybody seemed to think I was some type of magician making all of these synchronicities well, you are. <laughs> whilst they were like on the car how did you do it <laughs> It was quite incredible, all the synchronicity that was going on. It was completely mind-blowing. And it's just, um, it's just continued. It's just incredible. They come alive in your life. Mm. Like, have you ever seen Joan of Arcadia? Oh, no, I haven't, actually. No, yeah. no. Well, it's a little American child's program. You can probably see it on YouTube or something. But she meets God every day when she goes out and it could be the milkman or the postman or just it's a random person but mm. they have a profound message mm. and uh, that's what it's like when you get well on that's the journey. truth isn't it we, are, we all are we all are God so when you s recognize that and that's what I love that's yeah. what I love about the tarot but it's what I love about your take on the tarot because I always say that our world is like a huge oracle deck anyway and like I, I read signs in my daily life all the time but the way that you teach tarot is that it is the reflection of our reality isn't it it's all those different layers and it's so multi-dimensional it's incredible yeah like when people say to me what does the hermit mean I'm like mm, I, I don't know, know. <laughs> and they're like what do you mean you don't know you're supposed to be some tarot expert or can you tell me what this means I'm like no but I can show you how to find yeah, it for yourself yeah because the more you do this journey the more you realize how expansive each card is like a planet or a personality all on its own and it changes when it comes into contact with different people and like we do as people and so it's like no I can't tell you but I can take you on the journey you that's know? so amazing Tiff yeah. so what draw you, what drew you initially to the tarot and sort of how old were you and when did this journey begin mm. for you so yeah I was four and uh, <laughs> you've done this in past lives I'm sure yeah I guess yeah <laughs> I think so because I have this burning passion for it I think um, I have this kind of burning passion of like I w wanting people to see it in a different way so I'm sure that's a past life mm. thing it's like I can't choose any other path than that path it's like yeah so that feels past life but four yes um, Alfred Douglas's psychedelic deck we were just talking about, weren't we? So yeah, it was the 70s and it was bright lime and oranges and pow, you know. And Where did you see it? How did you find it? <laughs> it was on my mum's living room floor. <laughs> and it was just like Barbie and Ken didn't really cut the mustard <laughs> after that. It was just like Barbie and Ken. Oh, the lovers. Psychedelic <laughs> lovers, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was like mm, I'll have those please um, but actually she hid them from me I think because I didn't see them again until I was 14 yeah it was a test from the universe to make sure you were serious right I guess because <laughs> you know at 14 I was like I would have been a goth if I knew goths had existed you know <laughs> it was like real dark kind of Kevin and Perry really gone <laughs> wrong time in my life <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's when they reappeared. You would never know it looking at her now. <laughs> oh, light and fluffy. <laughs> Dreamcatcher earrings and everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, basically they were on my mum's bed like a forgotten lover, really. And uh, I was like, okay, come to Swipe. my bed. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I did. Yeah, I did, took them to my bedroom and was like, right, tell me everything is going to be okay. Everything is going to be just fine what would I get the devil the tower the ten of swords over and over again because uh, the tower is a mirror right mm. so it just mirrors back your own darkness but this is why I feel quite passionate about learning how to kind of work with it properly mm. because it was terrible for me I, I developed obsessive compulsive disorder and became pretty badly off mentally I mean that tendency was there or things from my past were there which was why you know it was coming in at that time but 
you know, these lessons, they're always mm. hardest at first when you don't understand how to work with things mm. and you've got to learn it yourself. And it culminated when I was 19, yeah, 19, and I was pregnant and I did um, a reading and uh, saw that I was going to lose the baby. You saw it in the reading at the time? I saw it in the reading. Wow. Um, and my way of dealing with that, because I didn't know how to work with it, was to basically go, okay, I didn't see that, and if I don't tell anybody, then it never happened. So it was complete denial, and I was like, I said, okay, I'm never going to work with the tarot again. I didn't throw them away, but I did lock them in a cupboard, and it was just like, I was so angry, I didn't want to know. I was really like, no, not doing that. Um, and then... I had my daughter and uh, she was born with a terminal condition and uh, four and a half months she passed over and uh, well after that was a bit like I've got nothing to lose now mm -hmm. so I started telling people and instead of them saying don't do that again like I expected them mm -hmm. to say they started saying would you read for me and I was like oh, I'm not sure about that bit of a tough initiation into the tarot right Dip? yeah <laughs> yeah wow um but then I you know I just it the thought wouldn't leave me alone and it was like okay well mm, what if I am supposed to help people live through what they're here to live through and so I threw my myself into it and it really became something where I found a course and in the course, they, they taught you how to connect with each of the archetypes. And for the first time, I understood that you are connecting with divine people, in a way, teachers. And they're not here to like predict doom and gloom. They're here to wake you up. Mm. And um, they never wanted your power in the first place it's just we didn't understand you know how to actually work with them we didn't understand them and so I really wow everything just kind of turned around for me and uh, I found out I was pretty good at it so <laughs> <laughs> that was that I guess <laughs> yeah because wow. the way you teach I, I came and did Tiffany's tarot course many many years ago I'm sure it's evolved a lot even since then yeah when I was editing Prediction Magazine and it was in Cornwall, a beautiful right. place called Rosmerin in Cornwall. And what I loved is that Tiffany actually will take you on a journey, almost like a speed dating journey with yeah. each of the uh, the archetypes. And it was, it was the most brilliant tarot course I think I'd ever done because for the first time ever, I actually understood it. Oh. Getting to know the cards like they were a person, like they were a, a consciousness of their own or a teacher of their own. Absolutely. It's incredible. And this is really, I think, what makes the way you teach really, really unique. So how has it evolved from there, would you say? Mm, well, it's quite interesting that you say speed dating because at that time I was working for a company and so the tarot courses that I had to teach had to be in one day. Now, can you imagine trying yeah. to teach something like the tarot in one day? So yes, we had to speed date. That was like <laughs> the only way I could do it. It was like speed dating around but it made it fun um, and people still really said to me a lot you know like wow I've never quite clicked with it like I have now you know in that sense I think the way it's changed is it's turned into a five month journey and it takes um, 14 weeks to go through all of the deck and you really get time to spend with each one and really get to know them and really forge that relationship. It's called The Transformational Truth of Tarot, like my book, and it really is The Transformational Truth of Tarot. So what happens for people on it is they, um, it's, it's like they cannot be anything other than who they are. Yeah. And that is the transformational truth, Breaks right? through the illusion. Absolutely. Yeah. See, it's alchemy. This is <laughs> alchemy. I love it. There you go. <laughs> alchemy. Alchemy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's how that has changed. And I'm just like very proud of it. It just feels like, 
I remember when I wrote my book, Al, I, and I was like, right, I've done it now. If I die, I'm happy. <laughs> You've done the job. <laughs> <laughs> We're never done, right? <laughs> no. And now I'm like, nah, if I die, I'm happy, but I'm sure there's probably going to be another thing. But let's you. talk about this book because this book basically had a consciousness, has a consciousness of its own too, right? Yeah, You've, yeah. How many awards have you won for this book now? Well, for the book, just one. Yeah, oh, but for yeah. your work, how many? Six. You've won six awards for your work with the tarot. Yeah. This is amazing. She really is a master <laughs> at this stuff. But with yeah. the course now, so you you have international clients. I mean, obviously, you've mm-hmm. moved to Spain, so you, yeah. you've taken your work online. So it's a, oh, we're getting head-butted <laughs> <Yeah>. by fly. <laughs> you've taken your work online. So how, how can people access your program? So if you go to tiffanycrosara.com, so... Um, Good luck with that. <laughs> C R O S A R A. Oh wow! I'm amazed. I was an editor. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I feel very honoured still. All the the words that you must have edited, you know. <laughs> Never forget my friends. <laughs> oh, um, if you go there, what you can do is you can actually join up for free for seven days on my absolutely amazingly brand spanking new membership site which was inspired by the leo king um do you know the leo king what's the leo king you don't know the the lion king no (laughs) (laughs) no Uh, you've not had a single david palmer uh no probably in my travels really shouty american uh astrologer Oh, I don't do gorgeous. shouty. <laughs> okay, he's got Mars and Leo and Leo, so oh, right. he's like very shouty. Um, anyway, I'm completely inspired by by uh, him, and uh, I was like, I wanna I wanna be like the Leo Queen because I am a Leo. And on the Leo eclipse that happened yesterday. Oh gosh, yeah. was it yesterday? No, Monday. I've lost Monday. Today. Monday. Monday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I launched it, and that felt like an amazing culmination because yesterday not yesterday monday's eclipse was by the time people are watching this there won't be any dates anyway but basically we've just gone through the solar eclipse which we hadn't had since 1979 Uh uh-huh and it's in the sign of leo yes uh actually the last one was 1999 on the 11th of august because it was my birthday okay and that was the one where it went dark okay in the in the middle of the day um, so it's a culmination of the last 18.4 years. Yeah. And that was just when I'd lost my daughter, wow. my father figure, and my marriage, all in the space of 18 months. So it really was that darkness. And I had to make that choice of like, my life wasn't going to be normal. And if I was going to choose it. So you've stepped out of another gateway, haven't you? It's exactly. like you walked into the underworld and now you're coming up out of it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And the launch of the membership site is that and that is just it's the course is about the fool's journey you become the fool and you step off the cliff and that can be a little bit too much for people only five percent live out of the comfort zone so I've had to find a way to kind of build a staircase down off the cliff and that's what the membership blue pill (laughs) exactly (laughs) you want to wake up or not (laughs) exactly Yeah. yeah you've got it so um it's basically a staircase you know, so that you can start to see and feel. And actually, as you get into that, you're like, I don't actually want to live any other way than this. So you can go to the site and sign up to get a seven day free trial of of that membership site. But the actual journey, the actual course, the transformational truth of tarot is really the cherry on the top. It's a different thing. Yeah. It's, it's perfect because we're all going through these initiations anyway. The world is changing, right? Everyone yeah. is having to wake up. So whether you're doing that spiritually and, and going on an inner journey or whether you're just looking at your life or, I mean, we look at the world around us. It's pretty intense right now. All paradigms are collapsing or being dismantled, as my mm. guides like to call it. Mm. But So you could either just let it happen to you or you could embark on a journey like the transformational truth of tarot where you can actually do it on the staircase in bite-sized chunks in a way that is safe for you or feels yeah. contained, right? Yeah. So and Tiffany as a guide is a really amazing mentor. That The work that she does is incredible. I can't recommend it enough. Oh, thank you, Al. So, Tiff, Bless. could we 
give our viewers a little sample of how sure. you teach tarot. Quite is there literally. anything you could like yeah, show us? <laughs> uh, it is literally going to be a little sample, isn't it? Because for some reason, the deck that I picked it is up a little morning, sample. <laughs> She's got tiny, <laughs> tiny tarot cards. <laughs> <laughs> like Alice in Wonderland took the red pill and shrunk. That is my favourite story. <laughs> I actually am writing in my book, it's the Alice in Wonderland. It's yeah. like Al in Wonderland. Al in That's Wonderland. That's what it should be yeah. called. <laughs> Completely. Yeah. So it is literally going to be a little sample. Look at these, these tiny, I've got tiny hands by the way, so they probably look massive. Oh, they're perfect for you, look. <laughs> I they're know, just, just about perfect. Well, they're even smaller than my hands. Yeah, I think we've had this conversation yes, we have. before. Yeah, yeah, just a bit and smaller. You've got lovely slender Sweaty fingers. Hands. I've got very chubby fingers. <laughs> oh, well. <Wow>. Sausages. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you're Killing reminding hands. me of, um, <laughs> what was it, uh, French and Saunders? I don't know if there's a song where she goes, oh, I'm a bit toppy, Pete, and I'm a bit bottomy, but we're a bit <laughs> like that, I think. With our hands. That was, uh, <laughs> maybe before your time, particularly as you were probably in Oz. Oh, they are just love these dinky cards. Ah, oh, there we go. Flipped out. Which That's one's the that? One. So I want you to take one as well. Oh, can I? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. And I don't want you to look at it. Oh, and I've seen this one. So I'm going to put it back. Okay. <laughs> I've got to show the camera what that one is, though, because I think that's important for you guys to clock. Okay. But I saw it, so I can't work with this. I need to see, I need to not see the one I'm working with. Ah, there's two, okay. All right, so this is gonna be very tricky to do because, but you're an adept at energy healing. Normally we use two hands, yeah? yeah and we sandwich it in between and we close well, our put eyes. It between my hand and my heart then. Yeah, good idea. And you basically just breathe the energy in from the card into your body. And you just receive any feelings you get or any visions. And you're not trying to guess the card, you're just opening to the message in the card. The most important thing is the message. So you then just basically ask for the message. And if you want to, you can assign a card to it, but it's really not about that. Okay. Do we talk about what our message is before we look? Yes. Do you want to go first? Okay, let's just see. So I straight away got lots of light streaming in and like golden light, like sunlight. And it makes me think of new horizons and you're talking about stepping through a new gateway, which mm. is what I feel I've also done. And I feel that that is what this solar eclipse we've just had is about, right? A lot of people stepping into a new horizon and a new gateway. And I've got a vision in my mind of twin pillars, almost like um, twin pillars, which makes me think of the alchemical marriage of the, the coming together of the masculine and feminine within each of us and fully accepting ourselves as the vessel, as the chalice of the divine. So I have no idea what card I've got. There's a lot of multi-layered kind of messages mm. in this in this energy, Yeah. but I'm interested to see. So what did you get? Okay, similar, but I didn't get the pillars, but um, I got a really massive big beach ball and like the fool kind of on the beach ball and on the beach and in Spain, uh, probably <laughs> yeah it might be a bit influenced by that you know and um it turned into a wheel so it turned into like a big you know fun fair kind of place and uh the message was not to get stuck not to get hung up on something um i don't know about you but this mercury retrograde has made me really nostalgic i can be that anyway i've got cancer moon but i'm really feeling quite nostalgic and uh i think also maybe i'm picking up on the amount of change that is coming in it feels huge and the message was very much <laughs> <laughs> message yeah don't get stuck it's like just keep going forward just keep keep turning the wheel keep moving 
and that the changes are big and they are massive and uh, you can't pin anything down you just have to keep going um, so I asked for a message for everyone for the collective so I think that's what the message was um, I see everything as tarot I was getting the fall I was getting the wheel it's never about getting the card right um, and it hardly ever is but it's always about how the message fits into the mm. card yeah so do you want to do your big reveal yeah. first yeah I also saw a path a golden path like uh -huh. the yellow brick road opening up wow. so it does feel like n a new path that mm. and like you I asked for a message for everyone so it feels yeah. like it, you know there is a new timeline or a new new potential for everybody coming so let's have a look I'm gonna have a look at my card and what did I say about the chalice uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Queen of chalices, queen of cups, which, you know, the Holy Grail is us, right? Yes. It's us. We are yeah. the vessel of the divine. Yeah. And you can see that yellow path. There's the yellow path, yeah. That you were talking about. Maybe you want to hold it back up. There's a yellow path there. Okay. Oh. The cup overfloweth. What have you yes. got? Yes. Oh, were you picking up on my pillars, Al? Oh, you've got the twin pillars. Yeah, I've got the twin pillars of the high priestess. Okay, so interestingly enough, the High Priestess is quite connected to the past because of the moon and the moon in Cancer, which I was saying I have. I've got moon in Cancer. Um, so this here, she does get hung up on the past hey, quite a bit. you do have, look at the um, like sunflowers. Are they pomegranates? They're pomegranates, pomegranates. which is uh, also, you know, Granada means pomegranate and that's where I moved that's to. That's where you're living. And it's full of pomegranates and pomegranates mean indissoluble marriage and I could go on for ages about well, the pomegranate. Fertility, abundance yeah, and all that stuff yeah. too, isn't it? Yeah, it's an amazing magical story that Look at this divine feminine <laughs> coupling though we've got here. This is us. <laughs> That's true. That is very, very look get Barbie and Barbie. Barbie and Barbie. <laughs> yes, <group> so, in. <laughs> um but if we think of it in terms of the message quite often you can pick up on the opposite as well mm. so like this one is about going deep into the darkness in the past and your one here about the you know you seem to get what this card is about in a way this beautiful flowing forward kind of energy but they are both water and it can mm. be quite nostalgic quite emotional and quite stuck in the past if you do this Go when you blue. read your cards then you won't have any projection so it's not like I'll take a card for a day and okay so I got this card today now I look at the meanings or what does that mean if you actually take the card and you don't look at it and you place it between your hands and you tune into it and you feel the energies and you ask it to open to you then it will show you what it's about and that's how the transformational truth of tarot works we don't go into it to learn the tarot mm -hmm. we to learn ourselves yes right? and we open and we say show us mm. what you're about we don't try to learn it yeah i love it <laughs> i love it that's amazing <laughs> tiffany chrisara thank you so much thank for your you, unbelievable Al. wisdom which Aww. is so much more than tarot mm. no but you do eat sleep and breathe it because it is a reflection of us yeah. and uh again i just want to say if anyone wants to know more about tiffany's work it's tiffany chrisara dot com and right. you can sign up for that free seven days i i really recommend tiffany's book the transformational truth of tarot it's one of the best books out there on the market not thank just you. about tarot but about your your own transformation and your own alchemy i love it thank you tiff oh, thank you Al. <laughs> thank you Aww.